All right, so like I said, I would be demonstrate or kind of explaining piece by piece how this works. This is a biomass or not biomass, it's a biofuel factory. And this tank that I have set up is 2 million, I guess millibuckets is what people refer to it. Basically, for one every 1000 of these units, it fills in one bucket, fills up one bucket or one can or one cell or whatever. So right now we got about 206 cans worth. Um, uh, yeah, so let me just start it at the beginning. I'll explain from here. These are just normal barrels. This one's holding saplings and this one's uh, holding fertilizer. These are just oak saplings that we're getting from our tree farm, which is over there. Why is my render distance so small? It's over there. Um, you, we used to have one fermenter and one still set up over there, but I, I mean, I was thinking since we had so many extra saplings and we weren't using them as fast as we could be, then I, I, I thought we might as well just set up a few of these because it wasn't too expensive to set this up. The main things you'll need, just so you know, and then you can come, you can come back later if you don't already have the materials. You're gonna need, well, for my setup, you, you, I use four of these. This is just a bunch of bronze. Um, and bronze gears so um, that's what you need for all the fermenters and then the other expensive part is well there's engines or redstone engines and a few sterling engines and then stills another bronze uh, thing and then some redstone tanks they're really not that expensive uh, basically you, you have to build you have to build it block by block but each of these blocks, the, really the price of it is only one iron ingot per block. Because let me show you, um, it's called an iron tank. Uh, made up of three parts. There's just a basic, uh, nothing special about this one. This is a, what you build the frame out of. In order to build the tank, first you build the top and bottom. And it has to be four to eight blocks tall. And it has to be an odd number um, dimensions. Uh, with, like, uh, ours is five by five. It could either be... 3x3, three three, I think 5, 7, or 9 also. I think that's it. And height can be 4 to 8. So, uh, like, the top and bottom, those are just these blocks. And then you also have to fill in the pillars in the corners. But then the, the walls, they, they can be anything you want. But uh, the windows are... I, th I think the only purpose is to, uh, to see how much is in there. Those are called the gate... Those are called gauges. Um... Well, let me get into the recipes after I explain what the things are. So these are the gauges, and then there's two valves. There's one right there where the stuff is coming in, and one right there where it's outputting to the ender chest, which or the ender tank, which we're not using. So the valve isn't being used right now. But if this was, uh, if this had room in this tank, then there would be stuff pumping out of the valve. So the recipe for this, you need a rolling machine. You're gonna need to produce a bunch of these iron plates because each of these blocks need iron plates. Basically, it's four iron plates for four blocks, and that's regardless of what type you're, you're building, it's four iron plates for four blocks, with some other stuff included for the special blocks. So, um, in order to produce an iron plate, it's just uh, four iron ingots, it gives you four plates. So basically, one iron ingot is going to give you one plate, which will give you one block. So, it's not too expensive. Yeah. Um, so, back to the beginning of this, now that you know what the resources that you'll need, um, this is a, these are barrels, like I said, these are just redstone engines pumping out the stuff. Uh, these are called transport pipes, this is a wooden transport pipe, golden transport pipe. Um, wooden is for pulling stuff out of inventories, golden is for speeding up movement, iron is for controlling flow in intersections, and that's all I'm using right, oh this is a uh, stone, just nothing special. Diamond is for sorting, so it sends, um, saplings down black output and everything else so blue or green I mean um yeah so that stuff uh, you probably already know that but just in case you didn't that's how all that works so fermenters you need to give them fertilizer and saplings to produce bio mass this produces green biomass and that's what we're pumping into the stills um, so I just have this pipe running up the side of these, so if there's room 
for either saplings or fertilizer, they'll fill up the spots. Um, so th every side of the fermenter, there's four sides, there's this, this, the front and the back, um, all the sides are being used. So the left side is input from for saplings and fertilizer. The, uh, these also need water to run. So we have a water pipe filling them up from the back with an aqueous accumulator, real basic wooden waterproof pipe and cobblestone waterproof pipes. Um, the front of it is just supplying it electrical power because it needs that to run. So here's a Stirling engine running on charcoal because we got a bunch of that from the tree farm also because our tree farm just produces a bunch of charcoal and saplings. So, um, wooden conductive pipe, uh, golden conductive pipe. That gives it, uh, that gives all these power. Final side is where we output the biomass. Just uh, waterproof pipes, wooden and cobblestone, and redstone engines to pump it out. So what happens, um, all this biomass, the green biomass comes in, and the stills, you input biomass and give them an M some MJ power, and then they change it into biofuel. And we're doing that with Stirling engines also, just like the same thing we're using to power the fermenters. And then we got redstone engines uh, pumping out the biofuel into the tank. Like I said, this is an ender tank. This is going to be constantly full as long as there's anything in here. Like, I think this is like 10 cans contents and it's full. This is like, like I said, 207 cans. So this thing will always be full. Um, let me show you. I also automate the, it's kind of the same thing. See how I have this, M, this pretty much constant loop going for the saplings and fertilizer. It's the same thing for the coal powering those engines down here. There's a barrel for charcoal. Just a redstone engine pump, pumping it out and going in a loop around. There's the two engines for the stills and then this one engine for the fertilizer or I mean the fermenters. So um, I guess that's pretty much everything but make sure that when you make uh, I'm gonna explain some more about the tanks so if you're still kind of confused about the tanks I'll explain some more about that otherwise that's it for the video um make sure that you're inputting the fluid into one of the walls and not one of the posts because you need to input it using a valve block and the corner posts they have to be the normal iron blocks uh, not the normal iron blocks but the normal iron tank walls and you need to use valves to input and output fluids. Um, so you have to just hook up the waterproof pipe to one of the valves and it'll put it in the tank. You can input from any height, so you can have the valve at the top of the tank, but if you're outputting fluids, you need to make sure the valve is on one of the bottom two rows. Um, oops. If, it's, if, it's, if the valve is more than two layers above from the bottom, then it won't it won't be able to output the fluid. Um, another thing, you can, it's its easy to just break these. Oops, hold on. And it stores the amount of fluid in it. So if for every reason, if you had to change the size of the tank, like if you ran out of space, or if you needed to add some valves somewhere, it's easy. The, the data for the um, tank will stay unless you break the bottom center block. So don't break that. Um, otherwise you can break everything and it'll still keep the data for how much how much it was full um, yeah so also like I said earlier just to make sure you remember the tank can be 3 by 3 ours is 5 by 5 it can be 3 5 7 or 9 it has to be a square has to be an odd number the height has to be uh, four blocks at least but it could also be up to eight and I believe that's everything except this thing. So this thing I haven't really used yet, but from what I understand, if you have, you can right click it to switch what mode it's in. Uh, at this mode with blue on top, that's when it's filling itself up. But when you have it on orange, then it will output to a wooden waterproof pipe if there was one hooked up to it to, out, to pull stuff out of it. So that's how you control whether it's an input or output tank. Um, yep, I believe that's everything. So let me know if 
you, if you have any questions. Um, also, this setup does take like almost ten redstone engines and like and three sterling engines, so it might be better to. I don't know. I I think it's fine this way, but if if you there might be other ways to do that. Um, you might be able to just power it with one engine and just like uh, connect the conductive pipes to the other engine over there, or I mean the other the stills without using engines. So there's different ways to do it, but this is this seems to work pretty well for me. But anyways, guys, I hope that helped. If you, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be glad to help. So I'll talk to you guys later. Adios.